Hello everyone to what is going to be my final video that I will be uploading for this channel. In today's video, I am going to be taking directly from the fanbase of the upcoming game Jurassic World Evolution regarding the most commonly requested things that people want for the game after launch. With its imminent release on June 12th for PC, PS4, and Xbox One, Jurassic World Evolution will have much to offer. But thanks to my investigations, it's quite obvious that there is still much work to be done. On the official forums for Jurassic World Evolution, there's a sticky paged forum that Frontier Developments has devoted for wish lists that the fanbase would like to see implemented. The first message on the page, which you will find a link in the description for, calls for the fanbase to deposit their ideas onto the forum for the developers to consider. And so after ending my investigation on the 23rd of May 2018, when the forum was about 43 pages long and had over 400 wishlist relevant posts, I compiled the top 20 most highly requested things from the fanbase that Jurassic World Evolution has yet to implement. For this video, I categorized them and will proceed to go down through the list from most to least requested for the first half of the video before discussing a number of miscellaneous requests that were also suggested. I subjectively made the last category by whether or not a given wish received less than 18 individual requests. Nonetheless, I decided to throw my hat into the ring for many of them, so those will be discussed toward the end of the video. At the very end, I will briefly discuss why I've deemed this video my last video that I'll be posting, which I suppose amounts to the closing of my channel. But don't worry, for those of you that want the good stuff, there will be some timestamps in the description that will allow you to go between each of the wishes, so look there if you want to skip around. And since most people watching won't reach the end of the video, I would like to use a moment now to ask that rather than give me likes or subscribers, which will be kind of pointless since this channel is going dark, perhaps you can make your voices heard to Frontier Developments by posting your own wishes in their form or even sharing this video, perhaps with Frontier Developments themselves, to help me get their attention. After all, this is their fan base we're talking about here, so maybe my video might get some of these wishes implemented faster or put into a format that's a little easier to peruse than a plus 40 page forum. And if you do decide to watch the whole video, then I will be incredibly humbled and grateful from the bottom of my heart if you do. So without further ado, and with one final hip hurrah for this channel, let's get on with the video. In order to best represent my information, I've decided to put it into a pie chart, so the video's focal point will revolve around a diagram like this. This chart here represents just a little over 400 individual responses constituting over 1,150 individual wishes. But this is not the final pie chart that we'll be investigating, and I'll explain why along with some of my methods and disclaimers. First, I think the biggest thing I must acknowledge is that my categories hide a lot of diversity originally present within each of them. Although I will try my best to elaborate on each category and try to follow consistent themes, I imagine some who may watch this video might be critical of my subjective categorization. I completely accept this and apologize for it because I wanted to make my video presentable to an audience so I couldn't discuss every single request that came through, especially if they're basically repeats of one another. Second, there were occasionally times when people tagged other people's posts and basically said, yes, I agree with this. When those instances happen, I counted that as a vote for one or more wishes, even if the tagger themselves did not type the thing they liked. And third, while I would like to think that this represents 400 individual people, I only realized somewhat later in my investigation that this was very likely not the case. People are allowed to post multiple times, so one person could potentially be the author of dozens of posts, something I've personally witnessed. While I tried my best to account for quote quote repeat offenders, I wanted to get this video out sooner rather than later, so I sacrificed some thoroughness to do it, so I apologize for that. Nonetheless, even if half of the responses involved people that previously responded, that still represents about 200 people, and most of the posts were unique from previous ones, so I don't think that impacted the results much. It does mean that maybe the numbers are skewed somewhat if the same people made the same requests and I didn't catch it, which I did witness and tried to account for too, but again, I think this will be negligible. The responses are still there, so you can investigate for yourself if you wish. And finally, the reason why this is not the final pie chart is particularly because some of these categories are already present in the game. In fact, one of the largest slices on the pie chart, which you see on the right hand side about 12 o'clock represents an aspect of the game that has only recently been confirmed at the time of this video, the sandbox mode. Because the forum was started on April 4th of 2018, people didn't know whether or not Jurassic World Evolution was going to have a sandbox mode where every dinosaur, building, upgrade, etc. was unlocked for you to use to create your park. 
But now it is known that Isla Nublar is going to be the site where our sandbox mode takes place. And not only do we have access to everything, but we can also specify the time of day, the weather, and the frequency of disasters striking our park. Therefore, this chart needs to be modified somewhat to account for that. So what exactly is getting removed from this chart? Well, as was just mentioned, one of the largest categories, representing about 100 individual wishes, taking about 6.7% of the near 1,500 total, is the sandbox mode. But there's a bit of a catch that requires some discussion. Among those 100 requests were a handful that were a little specific by referencing Jurassic World Evolution's predecessor, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, a game launched in 2003 for PC, PS2, and the Xbox original that was widely acclaimed by the Jurassic Park fanbase. As a warning, I will be making many references back to this game because there are some aspects about it that I argue are superior to what Jurassic World Evolution has to offer despite its age. But returning to the subject of sandbox mode, when mentioned in the Jurassic Park gaming community, it means one of two things. First, it's when every dinosaur, building, upgrade, etc. is unlocked for players to use with unlimited funds. And it's the way that I think most people understand it and will experience it in Jurassic World Evolution. But the second meaning is in the context of a Site B. Site B is code for Isla Sorna in the Jurassic Park universe, and in JPOG, it's the map that players unlock to access the game's sandbox mode, represented by the horned Ceratopsian icon at the end of the top row. But on Site B, you are unable to place any buildings, except a handful like the hatchery, to allow the dinosaurs to roam an island devoid of almost any man-made structures, just like on Isla Sorna. Going back to Jurassic World Evolution, some people have requested a means of making a sandbox that doesn't allow you to build most structures except the hatchery to create a natural island ecosystem instead of a theme park. I think this is easily remedied if the developers have permitted Isla Nublar to be capable of being built without the need to cater to guests, but I have no confirmation of this. Furthermore, and I think this is a really good point, some people want to choose whether to start off with unlimited cash versus a limited amount of cash. I suppose this particularly references another game I will be discussing a lot, namely Zoo Tycoon 2. In Zoo Tycoon 2, there was a sandbox mode, which you can see represented by the pail and shovel on the right, and a challenge mode, represented by the timer and cash on the left, where you had to fulfill challenges and you started off with a set amount of money. Again, I have no confirmation of this for Jurassic World Evolution, but I can't see why this couldn't be implemented now or in the near future. Basically, you either have unlimited funds or limited funds, with certain game features being unlocked or locked. Although we already have a funds-limited, locked feature experience on the other islands, Isla Nublar is special because we can actually specify the time of day, the weather, etc. I do fondly recall my attempts to try Zoo Tycoon 2's challenge mode with only a handful of money to do so, so again, I think the forum responders give a really great idea. So while we are getting sandbox mode, I hope Frontier Developments doesn't jip us in terms of having the ability to 1. Create a Site B with no buildings except the most necessary ones, and 2. That allows us to customize our financial startup. Returning to the chart, the second thing that's going to be removed is the category representing requests for a day-night cycle, which represented the sixth most requested wish, taking about 4.6% of the total vote. For those of you in the know, you might object to my removing this category, but hear me out, please. As for the rest of you, in Jurassic World Evolution, none of the islands have a day-night cycle that progresses from sunrise to noon to sunset to night and back again. To differentiate the islands, the developers have made it so that only one daytime or nighttime setting is in effect. So, for example, Isla Pena will only happen at night, while Isla Muerta will take place at dusk. Even Isla Nublar will only allow you to set the day-night cycle to one setting, not allowing you to experience the whole breadth of day and night on a single map. This is a real shame, and the only practical reason I can think of for why this is the case is to simplify the job of the developers to account for graphical issues like shadows and transitions between each setting and whatever, although I'm not really convinced. Still, I think the developers are going to be stick in the muds when it comes to this issue, and I suppose each island does need to be differentiated somehow, and we have the ability to modify it on Isla Nublar. So, on one hand, we have a day-night cycle. On the other hand, it's not what the community requested, and I hope the developers take that to heart. The third major thing that I'll be removing is the desire to see blood and gore, which received about 33 individual requests that took away about 2.2% of the vote, and was the 15th most requested wish for the game. In recent footage of Isla Muerta, when the Ceratosaurus dukes it out with the Triceratops, you could see blood clouds spurred up. 
Although this is not exactly the goriest thing anyone may see, it does mean that blood is in the game. However, one of the most consistent aspects about the request for blood and gore in the forums was that it should be optional. I think this makes a great deal of sense for a game that wants to cater to younger audiences, along with those people that might object to the sight of blood, although how exactly the swallowing of a goat or human doesn't count as gruesome is a little beyond me. But I have no confirmation on whether or not this is going to be optional, so I hope the developers will allow us to toggle on or off blood. But if worse comes to worse, I think the general consensus was that some form of blood and gore should be in the game rather than not. And so it is that these three things, along with a handful of requests that we already know are in the game, will be the only things that I'll be removing from the chart. Therefore, we are left with this final chart. Here we have about 889 individual wishes that make up the top 20 most requested additions to the game. There's only one category that's missing that I'll go over once I'm done that I'm going to call the miscellaneous requests category that, while not in the top 20, are still important to hear and possibly see implemented. A little disclaimer is that I'll be referencing the 889 total from now on when discussing the top 20, not the close to 1,500 total from before. This pie chart will be the primary focal point of the video, so let's get into them. Starting off with the top 5, two of them share first place with about 9.7% of the vote each. The first one I'll be discussing is my personal favorite, namely the responders wish for pterosaurs, aquatics, or both, usually both. The developers have said that they will add these creatures to the game if the fanbase asks enough, and so as far as I'm concerned, this is proof positive that the fanbase indeed wants them. As they've lamented numerous times on the channel, Jurassic World Evolution failed to include pterosaurs and aquatics like Mosasaurus, despite the fact that their movie namesake heavily relied upon their presence to drive the story, and which will partly drive the story for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom when it drops. But understandably, there are issues with including these creatures that I've addressed in a separate video, whose link you'll find in the description, that need to be addressed, particularly the need to rig them and account for collision detection. However, I suppose it's time to see if the developers can put their money where their mouths are and see if they can accomplish something that only the Zoo Tycoon series really managed to accomplish and which proved too great a challenge for JPOG. How exactly they're going to do this, particularly for aquatics when there's no water depth tool in the game yet, is a little beyond me. But to facilitate this process, I suppose this means that I'm a reluctant sponsor of paying extra fees to Jurassic World Evolution, such as paying for the pre-order edition, because the developers ultimately need more financial resources to rig, skin, and implement new creatures into the game, and perhaps implement the other 19 plus wishes I'll be discussing in the video as well. I'm happy to pay the extra price if it means we'll be getting flying and aquatic creatures later down the line, and many people appear to want them too based on the form, so the impetus to include them is there. Paying a little more also allows the inclusion of the next most requested wish on the forum. For the second co-equal, with 9.7% of the vote as well, was the request for more DLC, particularly DLC that added more dinosaurs. What makes this request stand out is that Frontier Developments has already set up a standard of how its DLC process is going to work. Even before Jurassic World Evolution, Frontier Developments has given many updates to another of its games, namely Planet Coaster. Meanwhile, for Jurassic World Evolution itself, for those that buy the pre-order edition, they'll get access not only to a new skin for the helicopter and jeep, but also five new dinosaurs, specifically Suchomimus, Styracosaurus, Archaeornithomimus, Crichtonsaurus, and Majungasaurus. On top of that, free DLC is going to be given once Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom drops, which was confirmed through this image of Carnotaurus presented in one of their videos, and which will likely include more creatures so as not to give away any spoilers from the film, including Allosaurus, Baryonyx, Cynoceratops, Stegimiloc, and the infamous Indoraptor. But based on the fan base, there are still plenty more requests to be added. Although I believe there are a handful of responders that requested DLC like new building types and skins for dinosaurs, the grand majority wanted some sort of dinosaur that we believe is not yet in the game. When making this category, I included most of the responses that made at least one mention of including some sort of dinosaur or non-dinosaur creature, excluding pterosaurs and aquatics. There were many times that I saw requests for Permian synapsids like Dimetrodon, or Ice Age mammals like woolly mammoths. But to keep in line with the theme of the Jurassic Park film universe's focus on the big critters of the Mesozoic world, new types of dinosaurs proper are probably the most viable in terms of their being added. To be somewhat tactical in ensuring these requests get implemented, 
I advise that people either try to request for dinosaurs that can share the same animations as another dinosaur already in the game, or they request for dinosaurs that are novel but can be implemented for many other types of dinosaurs. Allow me to explain. If you may have noticed, the ornithomimid dinosaurs in the game, namely Gallimimus, Struthiomimus, and Archaeornithomimus, all appear to use the same animations and skeletal rigging. Sure, they look different, but they basically act the same way, and their only major differences will probably boil down to the kind of habitat requirements they each require. Same thing with the Ankylosaurus, namely Ankylosaurus, Nodosaurus, and Crichtonsaurus. Same animations, different bodies. So if I wanted a new dinosaur, I might suggest a Shantungasaurus that follows the same animations as Jurassic World Evolution's Edmontosaurus. Or Pachyrhinosaurus that follows the same animations as either the Triceratops or Styracosaurus if they both don't already use the same animations. As for completely new models, I might suggest taking inspiration from another Jurassic Park game, namely Jurassic World The App Game. It has a huge selection of both dinosaur and non-dinosaur creatures, but to focus on the dinosaurs, you might notice that many similar dinosaurs share the same animations, such as most of the large theropods. The likes of Allosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Carnotaurus, and the starting carnivore Majungasaurus all have the same eating, fighting, and resting animations. So for me, to take inspiration from this game, a new dinosaur I might suggest for Jurassic World Evolution would be a Therizinosaurus, such as the one seen here, that can be implemented as a new entity in Jurassic World Evolution, and that can in turn be used to create other species that will follow the same animations, such as Dinochirus and Segnosaurus. By the way, I completely understand if some people feel that Jurassic World Evolution is following a cheap, cookie-cutter format with their dinosaurs that makes a vast majority of them feel the same, with only a handful being truly unique, but I think that's the point. It's a cheap means of bringing dinosaur favorites to the game, which is financially more viable for the developers, and so I personally accept this if it means more dinosaurs will come to the game in the near future, and I think the majority of the fanbase agrees. Moving on to third place, taking away about 9.5% of the vote, is a massive category that I like to call the Request for Individualized Asset Placement, or more simply, the Request for More Decorations and the ability to place them individually. This category includes every request for some sort of park decorations like floodlights and statues, or individual environmental objects like rocks or logs. But there was a common request that usually accompanied these requests for decorations that became the basis for creating this category. The ability to place individual objects by themselves. In the previews we've seen, when placing down forests for instance, you have access to a brush tool that paints a forest where you click. Meanwhile, buildings are able to be placed individually. But there is no ability to place down individual trees or decorations, and there is a notable lack of environmental features like rocks, logs, etc. across the landscape. By the way, that log you see in the water was proven long ago to be a Dilophosaurus, so that one doesn't count. Though forests, hills, and rivers are worth creating, it seems that the fanbase wants more stuff to dot the island landscape than just the trees. Meanwhile, for the guests, players want to be able to place down statues of John Hammond and dinosaur skeletons individually, along with other things like floodlights, lamps, benches, trash cans, and even environmental objects like trees to dot the roadsides, particularly prehistoric type trees. Although we have seen decorations dotting the streets of the main human hubs of various islands in the previews, such as this one for Isla Pena with the Spinosaurus skull and the trees, I have a strong feeling that they either come with the building already or there is a minute degree of customization that, while it allows you to place decorations, it doesn't allow you to place them individually. Although I imagine the ideal situation would be to have a tab devoted to decorative objects just like in Zoo Tycoon 2, I don't think this is viable considering the headache the developers would have to go through in terms of implementing such numerous and tedious features. Therefore, one great example I would urge the developers and others to consider is Zoo Tycoon 3. I can't believe I'm saying this, but decorations were one of the better aspects about that game. There were numerous decorations available that could be placed down, from man-made fountains, to rocky, vernon waterfalls, to individual trees and rocks. While it's not the level of customization present in its predecessors, it does give a PC console-friendly example to follow. Additionally, if this is not viable, then a worst case scenario would be to look to Zoo Tycoon 3's system of placing down enrichment and decorations within animal exhibits. In the game, players have the ability to select from between a half dozen to a dozen different locations in each exhibit to place down enrichment for the animals to play with and get close to the players themselves. 
It was even possible to place down individual decorations like tiki totems and other items in the exhibit as well. Therefore, I implore the developers to at least develop this much freedom for Jurassic World Evolution. So, for example, a building would be selected, then a tab would be available to be selected, and with that tab, players could pan around a handful of viable locations around the building to place certain objects like statues and trees and whatever. While the decorations wouldn't be as placeable as the buildings themselves, perhaps this would give a degree of customization not previously present before. Now to fourth place with about 9% of the vote was the request for more guest attractions and amenities, particularly attractions. Some responders felt that the game did not have enough things for the guests to interact with. Although there were some requests for more guest amenities that catered to their needs like food and drinks, most wanted actual attractions, three of which stood out. First was the request for more attractions present in JPOG, including the numerous viewing platforms like towers and underground viewing vents, as well as rides like the balloon tour and the safari rides. Many responders voiced how lacking in variety the viewing systems in Jurassic World Evolution are, where the viewing gallery and the gyrosphere are the two major means of getting our guests close to the dinosaurs. I certainly agree that JPOG really had a lot of diversity, and the Jeep idea seems easily addable because Jeep assets and gyrosphere pathing assets are already present in the game, so I do hope the developers add future attractions similar to those seen in JPOG. Second, there was the request for more water rides, particularly canoe rides as was seen in Jurassic World the film. Again, I think this is a great idea, and I believe it would go very well with an aquatic-themed DLC where actual water-based game entities like boats, canoes, and especially the Mosasaurus could finally make their debut. And third, there was the request for petting zoos, again as was seen in Jurassic World the film. Some of the responders I saw don't like how the dinosaurs immediately hatch from the hatchery as full-grown adults and would prefer to see some emerging as offspring, like a juvenile T-Rex. But admittedly, I find the implementation of this idea somewhat difficult simply because it would mean the developers would have to make entirely new models for an attraction that may or may not be applicable outside of said attraction. Maybe the developers could go cheap and make literal miniature versions of the adult dinosaurs in a petting zoo style attraction, but I think that would also entail the presence of children, and considering how that's a whole other ball game to tackle for a park management game filled with human hungry predatory dinosaurs, well, I don't think this is going to happen. But bottom line, much of the fanbase wants more guest-oriented buildings, and I think JPOG and Jurassic World the film have a lot to offer for inspiration. In fifth place, with about 7.4% of the vote, was the desire for more terrain tools. At launch, the game will permit you to use a paintbrush tool to paint forests, shallow lakes and rivers, and hills or valleys. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. And I believe this is the basis for grumbling among the responders on the forum that wanted something more. In particular, requests were divided between wanting tools that could create new biomes other than generic forest and grassland, and tools that could change water depth. Regarding the former, many people wanted to add unique biomes, such as the Redwood Forest biome as seen in Jurassic Park The Lost World and in the T-Rex Kingdom of the Jurassic World film, or even plots of sand like we saw in the first trailer for Jurassic World Evolution. I suppose this also goes hand in hand with a desire for more decoration variety, and so perhaps they could be tag teamed together with the addition of new biomes that in turn could mean new decorations like biome specific trees. Regarding water depth, many responders wanted to change water depth in the context of permitting boats and canoes to sail through on tours, while also permitting aquatic creatures like Mosasaurus to swim. And there were even a few that wanted to recreate the first Jurassic Park scene where the Brachiosaurus emerged from the lake or the Spinosaurus attack in Jurassic Park 3. Now, admittedly, the implementation of water depth would also bring about its own host of problems, such as dealing with collision detection, making animations to account for dinosaurs swimming or accidentally getting caught in deep water, and this is an issue I discussed at length in a previous video. Nonetheless, if Frontier Development is serious about listening to feedback from the fanbase, then I hope they'll find the means to get around these problems and implement assets into the game that are water-friendly, whether they be creatures like Mosasaurus and Spinosaurus, or entities like boats and canoes. So, in a nutshell, more terrain tools, please. So now we go from the top 5 requests and into the rest that received between 2 to 6.2% of the vote. Moving on to 6th place with about 6.2% of the vote is the wish for better dinosaur AI. 
On one hand, in my experience, certain details about the dinosaur's AI have impressed me, particularly how dinosaurs will allow their heads to follow entities like the Jeep, helicopters, and other dinosaurs when they are in close proximity. For instance, I fondly recall seeing a ceratosaurus gazing up at a tall brachiosaurus as they both went their separate ways, so this is one area where the AI is shining. On the other hand, some aspects about the dinosaur AI are very robotic. For example, the species profile for Gallimimus perfectly demonstrates one of these problems that applies to many dinosaurs. Namely, the dinosaur social interactions take place in the form of these huddle groups consisting of a handful of dinosaurs all bobbing their heads up and down and looking at one another awkwardly. As for the carnivores, we have yet to see an instance of carnivores that work together or strategize to take down prey. I have seen no stalking mechanic for something like the Tyrannosaurus, or a pack hunting mechanic for smaller creatures like Velociraptor outside of the seemingly scripted early builds we've seen. Meanwhile, herbivorous dinosaurs that are not being targeted often run away, from the tiny Struthiomimus to the seemingly tanky Triceratops and Edmontosaurus. And this last group is ironic because they're big dinosaurs running away from oftentimes littler or weaker predators. There is another issue regarding the frustratingly robotic way that carnivores go about killing their prey, but that's part of the top 20 list, so I'll save that for later. But what exactly are people requesting instead? Well, they're requesting the things that JPOG had. One thing that was repeatedly requested for was for dinosaurs to herd together and interact with one another without having to go through an animation or huddle group to do it. For example, none of the hadrosaurs in JPOG did any animations between one another, yet they walked together like a herd, and they honked and communicated with each other as well. Oftentimes, they would do the same activities together, like drinking and eating and sleeping together. There were even systems with hierarchy where one dinosaur was the head of the herd and was denoted by a crown in their UI, and some dinosaurs were more comfortable living in the same pen as other dinosaurs, such as Corythosaurus with Parasaurolophus and Parasaurolophus with Edmontosaurus. Similarly, a pack of Velociraptors had pack leaders denoted with a crown, and they hunted together and took turns leaping on larger prey, dropping off and then running with the pack again to do it all over. It created many magical moments in the game for me personally, so why is this not present in Jurassic World Evolution? Although I feel like the game once hinted to this sort of magic before, such as this screenshot here, and this one with the Triceratops all grazing together, these appear to be earlier builds. So what could act as a solution? Well, I think that the developers should implement one of two things. First and most importantly, allow dinosaurs to interact with one another simply by being in close proximity to one another. Dinosaurs should be walking or running side by side together without following a set animation, although the occasional choreographed animation wouldn't be too bad. They might also eat and drink at the same time as well, coming together in herds that do relatively the same thing simultaneously. I might even propose that certain social requirements might be fulfilled if certain species are present, like a single Edmontosaurus and Parasaurolophus, each fulfilling a single social need in their UIs. Similarly, carnivores should do these things too, and they should somehow be able to attack together in some instances. But their prey should not be passive victims, and so perhaps the presence of multiple herbivore entities, in the case of the larger species, should cause carnivores to receive a debuff that forces them to retreat, such as a Tyrannosaurus facing a herd of a half dozen Triceratops. Interestingly, I'm not against those moments we've seen in the previews where the carnivores walk near to prey without causing a reaction, except to gaze at one another, because carnivores in the wild do the same thing today. When they're not hunting, prey doesn't bother to run. The predator's been seen, it can't do anything about it, and so that's fine for carnivores in Jurassic World Evolution, as long as it doesn't involve moving to hunt something. But anyway, what I and the fanbase really want is a system where dinosaurs properly move in herds and coordinate with one another without needing to go through needless animations as Frontier Developments is wont to do. <coughs> Suit Tycoon 3. <coughs> Seventh place is shared by two wishes that both received about 6% of the vote. Starting off, we have the request for assets inspired from the film universe. In other words, original Jurassic Park content. People want things we have seen in the Jurassic Park franchise, including music and certain entities like buildings and dinosaur skin colors. Indeed, some of the most common requests included the skins of dinosaurs seen in the films, such as the giraffe-like Brachiosaurus color scheme from Jurassic Park 3, the tiger skin Velociraptor in Jurassic Park The Lost World, or even the never-before-seen colors like the Pachycephalosaurus color scheme as seen on the website for Jurassic World. 
Another common request was for a building seen in the movies, such as the original Visitor Center in all its glory from the first Jurassic Park, along with the Raptor Paddock as well. Nostalgia is a powerful thing. The fanbase wants these, but I certainly wouldn't mind seeing these, so perhaps an old-fashioned DLC might be in the cards, something that includes new dinosaur skins based on those seen in the movies, new attractions and or buildings like the Safari Tour or the Visitor Center, or even some dilapidated structures to act as decoration like the old research base in Jurassic Park 3. I mean, Frontier Developments is working with Universal, so why the former would be denied adding these assets would be somewhat beyond me. The eighth wish, with about 6% of the vote as well, is the desire to allow vehicles to be attacked and destroyed. Apparently, the developers have mentioned that the Jeep and the Gyrosphere Balls are going to be indestructible, so you can theoretically dance around the cage of a Tyrannosaurus and never fear your car getting exploded or being given the Jurassic Park film treatment. When I heard this, I was certainly surprised and confused at this unfortunate decision on the part of the developers, and the fanbase on the forum seems to agree. In contrast, it was a peril in j for Jeeps to be driving around carnivore paddocks, creating nail-biting experiences that created terror or, among sadistic players, bemusement when the car exploded thanks to a large carnivore, and guests inside were forced to run for their lives with the predator hot on their heels. While I might understand the logic that the developers don't want driving in a car to be stressful or sadistic for younger players to experience, I don't think the majority agrees with this. At the very least, I can imagine some sort of upgrade to the car that can unleash a sound blast to drive away all but the most bloodthirsty of creatures from the car. People want a challenge when in the dinosaur pens. They want to be chased by a Tyrannosaurus and potentially killed, not passively observed like they're nothing. And the developers made numerous references to this idea that the cars were going to be vulnerable to dinosaur attacks in the first trailer. So in a sense, this picture is false advertising unless they somehow add it. And considering how the destruction of vehicles has been integral to the Jurassic Park films, such as the various Jeeps in the first two films, and the gyrospheres in Jurassic World and the upcoming film as well, it makes it all the more inexcusable that this is not something we'll see in-game. Basically, the developers should get into gear to make at least a small set of animations that cause the vehicles to explode or stop moving, and then perhaps another Jeep will need to be used to tow the vehicle to an extraction point to repair it and perhaps get upgraded. Whether we might see something more complex among the dinosaurs, like an ankylosaurus smacking the gyrosphere like a soccer ball, or even the helicopters being in danger for flying pterosaurs, if they ever get added, would make a really cool scene to see in Jurassic World Evolution. The ninth wish, with about 5.9% of the vote, is a first-person mode. Now, although we have a degree of control in the Jeep that allows us to shoot darts and um, our camera wherever, as well as our rifle in the helicopter, we don't have a first-person mode like what was present in Zoo Tycoon 2 and 3. The majority of the responders really wanted to walk among their guests and see from their perspective, and thereby join them in order to imagine what they themselves might see if they saw a real-life Jurassic Park. A handful even wanted to go into the buildings like the Innovation Center or the Viewing Gallery to experience them like in the movies. To make the job of the developers simple, I think they should look back to Zoo Tycoon 3, again shocking I mention it in a positive light, and basically implement a controllable character, just like controlling the car but with quicker, smaller reflexes. Of course, rather than just passively holding a camera, they should perhaps look like Owen Grady and have a rifle to be able to get the job done on foot without a car, and perhaps create a life or death scenario where your character could get eaten, and you'll have to make up a new person in response. As long as we have some sort of first-person mode, even without being able to go into the buildings, which I admit might be too much work for the developers, then I think this wish will be golden. Number 10 on the list, with 4.7% of the vote, is the desire for better management of the human side of your park. This category is meant as a catch-all collection for all requests that desire for some sort of added complexity to how the security, employee, and or visitor management worked. It is admittedly one of the harder categories to pin down because it tends to involve a lot of disparate concepts, but there are a few consistent themes I suppose I can work with. When better guest management is mentioned, it usually is in the context of being allowed to have access to a guest UI for every person in the park. To take from other games, in Zoo Tycoon 2, each guest could be selected in order to see their UI, which had information on their needs for food, water, entertainment, and especially happiness and they sometimes would express their pleasure or displeasure through emoticons above their heads. There were even times when we could see what items they bought and what their favorite animals were. 
Zoo Tycoon 3 was less complicated, but it did have various UIs to assess such things as guest happiness, thirst, and hunger. For JPOG, guest UIs detailed information like what dinosaurs they saw, what type of person they are such as a thrill seeker or dino nerd, how much money they have, where they come from, and any current comments they had to say. Taking from these examples, I believe people want to have desires and wants, like whether they are entertainment, security, or research buffs, would be nice along with a view that allows players to see the moods and wants of their guests through emoticons, perhaps through a system as was seen in Zoo Tycoon 3. Meanwhile, for employee management, many responders wanted a means of hiring and firing employees, the ability to set wages, and to see, if not influence, employee happiness. Although I recently saw a UI of a building that showed the ability to set how many people are working in said building, I'm not sure if employee management goes any more in depth than this. I think it would be really cool to implement a system that influenced the number of sabotages one received based on the mood of the employees, so low wages would mean more sabotages, and vice versa. Another really cool idea regarding employee management was the ability to designate certain paths as not accessible to guests, but accessible to employees. I really think this would allow some players to orderly create sectors devoted to just employees, perhaps creating a sort of employees-only village connected to the main hub of tourists. And regarding security, while some requests desired for structures like hidden security cameras and security towers, others went a little more complex and actually wanted to have on-the-ground people that could be kitted out and selected to march through the park to take down rampaging dinosaurs. While no doubt a cool idea, I personally would like the developers to exert the least amount of effort possible while still implementing big, overarching things that should be developed and done right. So I'd just be happy if we have more security buildings and structures, perhaps like what was present in JPON. So if the developers haven't already done so, they should think of easy ways to help make the management system for security, visitors, and employees a little bit more complex. Number 11 on the list with 4.1% of the vote is the desire for better guest AI. Somewhat similar to the request for dinosaur AI, many responders feel that the ways the guests interact and experience the park of Jurassic World Evolution are somewhat bland. While guests do walk around, run away from danger, and gawk at tranquilized dinosaurs, I do agree that I have not seen enough variety in terms of the guests animating themselves and responding to anything beyond the occasional breakout dinosaur. Jurassic World Evolution's developers should certainly look away from Zoo Tycoon 3's guest AI, which I argue was badly implemented, and instead look to Zoo Tycoon 2 for inspiration. When guests observed dinosaurs, they jumped up and down, screamed in joy, or ho-hummed to themselves as they pondered the site before them. They would also interact with buildings rather than just walk into a spacious building and disappear for a few moments. They got food, sat down at tables to eat them, and then went on to the next attraction. Basically, I believe that at the very least, the developers should make a handful of animations for guests that allow them to interact with the environment and buildings a little bit more. Ideally, if they're up for a real challenge that caters more to what the fan base wants, guests should sometimes do silly things like touch the electric fences, or react to the presence of jeeps better, and my personal favorite, to be able to react to the time of day. Especially if we get a proper day-night cycle, guests should become scarce at night and move into the hotels before emerging in droves during the day. And I think this would really add to a sense of change to the pace of the game if players get to see this. Bottom line, guests should have more complex AI and reactions to certain phenomena that mimic awe and excitement rather than just passive observance and occasional fear. Moving on to 12th place with 2.8% of the vote is the wish for more guest and staff variety. This request particularly desires that the guests and staff entities within the park be physically altered so that they are largely unique from one another. Although different skin colors and t-shirt colors might count as variations, the responders on the forum seem to want something more. They wanted to see people in a variety of hats, clothes, and other accessories, people walking around with different gates, and people that are tall, short, fat, skinny, etc. Some have asked for children as well to be included among the guests, but again, let's just say that's a whole different beast to tackle for a tycoon game like the one Frontier Developments has on deck. Meanwhile, the desire for more employee diversity tends to involve more occupations than can be visibly seen throughout the park, including tour guides leading groups of guests, entertainers to, well, entertain, and janitors sweeping up the paths, something that the Zoo Tycoon series has done wonderfully. Even JPOG in a lesser capacity had diversity in terms of guests with many types of body profiles and janitors as well. 
I certainly would advocate that the developers would create at least five unique skins and models of guests and people that can be wrapped around the base game's human skeleton, tweaked somewhat, and given unique clothing and accessories. Meanwhile, I'd like to hope that maybe the developers can add one or two unique staff types that would emerge if players place down, say, a restaurant or a viewing gallery before walking throughout the park thereafter. It would be ideal if maybe we could see something more complex, perhaps something amazing like an entertainer that holds a compsognathus or microceratus or some other sort of really small dinosaur on a leash or on their shoulder, but that might be asking for too much. Either way, more guest skins and appearances would be a small but viable and good way to help spruce up the life of our parks. In 13th place, with a wish that has 2.8% of the vote as well, is one of my biggest gripes about the game the wish to improve the attack animations of the predatory dinosaurs. To take some examples that I and others saw in the previews, Ceratosaurus will target, say, a Struthiomimus, run up behind it while the Struthiomimus stays put, slowly adjusts itself, and then leap into a cool animation that results in a kill. Then there are the choreographed incidences where the Ceratosaurus targets a fallen human, slowly walks up to it, and then calmly swallows the flailing individual whole. And the worst offenders are the goats. The goats are completely oblivious or fearless to their impending doom, and they are swallowed like dead hunks of mutton. To summarize all these examples, predators always kill prey through an animation involving both predator and prey. For me, it's Frontier Developments following the same old trope of choreographed animation so prevalent in Zoo Tycoon 3, where many animals, especially the smaller ones like parrots and crocodiles, loop their animations every few minutes or so. For me personally as well, it's one of the bigger reasons why j is superior than its spiritual successor. Allow me to explain. I first need to start by quickly defining what exactly I mean when I say the word animation. Obviously, almost every animation of an entity in a video game involves an animation, whether that be walking, running, attacking, etc. So what do I mean? A dinosaur attacking another dinosaur involves animations that will cause one entity to react to another. Well. Let's compare JPOG's hunting system to Jurassic World Evolution's system. If you've ever seen a JPOG ceratosaurus hunt a small herbivore, a smaller carnivore, or even just a goat, you'll notice that the dinosaur points its nose at the target, chases it, and then simply slashes its head down to the side to kill it. There weren't really any choreographed animations to allow the prey to be killed, and it's sometimes made for some complex, non-linear attack patterns that were fun to watch. The Ceratosaurus might even miss occasionally if the prey managed to juke it, and I felt that this was very real to life. To take another example, when the JPOC Tyrannosaurus chased down Hadrosaurus, they both had to run as fast as they could, and sometimes the T-Rex got tired and stopped chasing the prey, only to resume and catch up before simply slashing down and toppling its prey to the ground. So while we don't get the complexity and brutality that an animation involving Spinosaurus throwing a Myasaur over its shoulder evokes, it doesn't involve this janky, wait for your partner dancing that the dinosaurs need to do in Jurassic World Evolution in order to sync up together. In JPOG, there was no special animation involved, just luck and random chance. And since many responders directly referenced JPOG when discussing this issue, I think a fair number of people would agree with me. But does this mean that I hate every choreographed animation sequence for the dinosaurs? To be clear, no. JPOG itself had fight sequences between various dinosaurs, particularly when the Tyrannosaurus went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spinosaurus. That was one of my favorite animation sequences in the game, and those dinosaurs had to sync up together in order to do the animation, and I was fine with that. But I suppose the issue is that Jurassic World Evolution does it too much, and in JPOG it was a rare but rewarding experience to be able to catch a glimpse of it. I cannot express how frustrated I was to see one video involving a Ceratosaurus charging through a herd of Struthiomimus, only to see that one Struthiomimus that it targeted standing still while it waited for the Ceratosaurus to link up behind it and do the animation. When I see a predator hunt in Jurassic World Evolution, I want it to work for its meal. I don't want the prey to passively wait for its killer to come and get it, but to actually run for its life, whether that be a Struthiomimus, a goat, or a human. And if all I get is a simple slash of the head for my Ceratosaurus in order to kill, then I would be much happier since I know it earned its meal. Although I'm perfectly fine with the rare case of when a Ceratosaurus manages to successfully ambush the Struthiomimus and commits to a choreographed animation sequence, I think it's going to happen too much in Jurassic World Evolution. 
it's going to get very old very quickly when I see my predators do the exact same killing animation every single time. So to fulfill this wish, the developer should allow some sort of targeting system by the predators that allows them to keep chasing prey and attacking them without having to go into an epic animation that requires both to tango and sync with one another. Number 14, with 2.7% of the vote, is another personal wish of mine that I had hoped more people on the forum would have advocated for. Modding. There were a few responders that definitely wanted a Steam Workshop page for Jurassic World Evolution that might produce new skins and models for players to access, and I believe there was even one that claimed to have assets already that they would like to place in the game. As I discussed in a video at length, whose link you will find in the description, I believe modding is integral to the survival of Jurassic World Evolution long after it's released, particularly because it was integral to the survival of JPOG to the present day, such as the Forgotten mod with the likes of the Indominus Rex, or the Advanced Operation Genesis mod with completely new creatures, both dinosaur and non-dinosaur, whose link you'll find in the description as well. I think it's fair to say that Frontier Developments won't forever keep updating the game or releasing content for it either. In that case, I think Frontier Developments should eventually hand the reins over to the Jurassic World Evolution fanbase to take models and make new things with them. In fact, I argue that a fair handful of the wishes within the top 20 would actually be solved through modding, such as more dinosaurs that use the same base models, such as a Dasplinosaurus or an Omega-09 Rex using the same base model as the Tyrannosaurus, and new skins based on movie dinosaurs like the tiger skin Velociraptor. And although I mentioned this before, if Universal is nervous that their assets might get stolen or they get mired in copyright infringement cases or whatever, then they should follow the example of a separate video game called Total War Warhammer, a game that emerged thanks to the partnership between Games Workshop and Sega through Creative Assembly. To give a nutshell, Total War Warhammer has an amazing modded community on Steam, whose link you'll find in the description. However, I believe Games Workshop set forth the condition that only in-game assets could be used to mod the game, so while the sizes, stats, and color schemes of some of the game's entities can be changed, they can't be completely new models ported in. Similarly, Jurassic World Evolution should at least find a way to permit this much modding where you can modify asset sizes, colors, and stats, but perhaps not necessarily import new creatures or models. But in my experience, lots of modding flexibility has done wonders for games like JPOG in terms of their success. I might even be tempted to say that the downsides of modding accessibility are overblown and are far outweighed by the replayability and financial draw of said replayability that modding would permit. So, there's my attempt to defend modding. Moving on, in 15th place with about 2.5% of the vote is the desire for male and female dinosaurs. While I imagine a few responders probably would be content to have just the color scheme, if not the actual models of some of the male dinosaurs we've seen in the Jurassic Park universe, particularly the Buck Tyrannosaurus and the male Velociraptors of Jurassic Park 3, I imagine most were wanting a system where dinosaurs could actually breed. This, of course, would fit right in with the theme of Jurassic Park that life finds a way. But unfortunately, this is one wish that I just can't see getting easily implemented into the game. I mean, the ability to mod, or less likely an actual DLC, to allow male-specific models or coloration schemes into the game is one thing, but an actual breeding system where dinosaurs lay eggs and rear young seems quite far-fetched. I mean, let's consider that the developers don't want to toy with the maturity rating of their game when it comes to creating dinosaur offspring the old-fashioned way, while making dinosaur eggs and babies for the 40-plus species sounds like a lot of work. Again, I'd be happy to compromise with seeing a model made specifically to look like the male dinosaurs, but any other system of dinosaur self-replenishment outside the hatchery system seems like a far-fetched idea to implement, sadly. In 16th place, with about 2.4% of the vote, is the desire for lethal options for the jeep and helicopter. Admittedly, I hesitated to include this category because it seems so matter-of-fact that Jurassic World Evolution would permit a lethal option for rifles that would kill rather than sedate dinosaurs. Obviously in JPOG, helicopters were outfitted with lethal shots that were intended to kill dinosaurs rather than sedate them, and whole missions were oriented around the act of killing dinosaurs to save civilians or peaceful herbivores. So how could such a system not be present in Jurassic World Evolution? I suppose out of an abundance of caution, I've decided to include this category because we have yet to see gameplay footage where helicopters or jeeps shoot to kill dinosaurs rather than merely sedate or medicate them. It may be possible that the developers don't want to permit players a sadistic means of getting rid of dinosaurs, 
but considering that the game will be rife with carnivores at the throats of their prey, this seems like a poor excuse. And for the serious player, there may very well be a time and place where predators like the Tyrannosaurus, Spinosaurus, and the Indominus Rex need to be put down, just as was deemed necessary in the film. And I don't see why some players can't just use the sedate option all the time and never touch the lethal option. In other words, it's better if players have access to lethal options that some may never use, rather than have no lethal options that caters to a minority of players, and I think the responders on the forum would agree. So the developers, either now or in the near future, need to ensure that some form of lethal weapons option is available, perhaps as an upgrade that one can get through research that allows a powerful means of stopping rampaging dinosaurs dead in their tracks, quite literally. Now moving on to 17th place with about 2.4% of the vote as well, is a better repair system. To explain further, in Jurassic World Evolution, there will be times when fences are broken, or buildings are broken, or basically something is broken. To repair them, either the player will need to send the AI jeep to repair the damage, or they themselves can drive to the location and do it themselves. When Jurassic World Evolution first dropped, one of the first major scenes was of a repair team going about the business of fixing up the Tyrannosaurus' paddock before the situation goes awry. But unfortunately, while I have seen tarps and scaffolding briefly cover broken down buildings, which is good in my opinion, I have never seen an instance of a person getting out of the jeep to go fix damaged fencing. In other words, we're never going to see this sort of sight in the game. From the forums, I think a fair number of people agree that the animation and overall issue of repairing dinosaur breakout damage is just too simple and boring. The damage gets magically done without any form of realism, losing that sense of immersion somewhat. I might even say that this wish is actually tied closely with the eighth wish on this wish list that vehicles can be attacked, because ideally, we should be careful about sending repairmen to fix fences because some predatory dinosaurs might try to eat them. So what options would I suggest? Well, as a worst case scenario, I would advise the developers to follow the pattern that they've done with buildings getting repaired through brief animations of scaffolding and tarps being pulled up. But in this case, they should have one or two repairmen briefly emerge out of thin air somewhere on or near the fencing, and they should look like they're repairing the damage before immediately disappearing once the job is done. But ideally, the developers should perhaps allow us to command our co-driver in the jeep to exit out of the vehicle and go to the destination in question before animating themselves like they're using a wrench or a blowtorch to indicate that they're repairing. It doesn't have to be complex, but it does require an individual employee getting out of the car to do the job. And while that's happening, perhaps they will be vulnerable to predators, and the main driver, namely us, needs to keep an eye out to shoo or scare away would-be predators, while perhaps ordering our mechanic back into the car so we can drive away safely. This might also apply to the feeding stations, where the co-driver gets out of the car and looks like they're pouring a bag of food onto the ground. We need more life in the animations involved, at least with repairing fences that dinosaurs have broken out of, to really immerse ourselves even with this simple task. Number 18, with about 2.3% of the vote, involves yet another throwback request inspired by JPOG, namely an island generator. On one hand, this request is closely tied with the desire to have a sandbox mode, which we obviously know will be fulfilled through Isla Nublar. But this request is unique because rather than have a pre-built island based off the appearance of Isla Nublar or the Las Cinco Muertas islands, we can create an island of our own design. Indeed, let's consider that Isla Sorna is going to be the largest island and thereby larger than Isla Nublar. While Isla Nublar will be our sizable sandbox, it will not be as big as the campaign-locked Isla Sorna. In other words, if we want the biggest island, we need to suck up to the fact that Isla Sorna will also have preset weather and daytime animations that we can't edit. I think that it would have been really cool to have built on all six islands, and suddenly at the end something pops up that says, What's this? A new island has emerged or been discovered in the Pacific. Masrani Corporation has acquired it, and you are responsible for its success, so go build it. Unfortunately, I imagine that building islands is a complex issue for the developers of Jurassic World Evolution, much more than an older game like JPOG had to deal with, because presumably islands need to be carefully managed in terms of where the initial monorail portal is going to be, how big it is, what sort of waterfalls and forests and whatnot are going to dot the landscape, etc. Therefore, I think this will be another unlikely addition to Jurassic World Evolution, but again, I can understand why it would add some uniqueness and replayability to the game, so... Who knows, maybe the developers might just consider this wish and implement it. 
Number 19, with about 2.3% of the vote as well, is the wish for dinosaurs to have some sort of growth system that progresses from hatchlings to adults. As I lamented for the 4th and 14th wishes, the implementation of baby dinosaurs seems a little too difficult because their models are so different from the adults. While it might be somewhat unrealistic to have fully grown dinosaurs within seconds after we set about creating them in the hatchery, I think this is as good as it gets. And after all, not only would the developers have to make new models of all the dinosaurs in the game, but they would have to find some way to transition the babies into adults. Although Zoo Tycoon 2 had an instantaneous system of adulthood, where babies immediately became adults, many responders in the forum probably were looking more for a gradual system of growth that went from hatchling to sub-adult to adult, and I don't think that's going to happen. With that said, I suppose I'll use this moment to bring attention to another tycoon game called Prehistoric Kingdom, an indie game created by Shadow Raven Studios that will be released within the next year or so and already has a demo available on its Steam page. You'll find the website's link in the description as well as a link to its Steam page. This game is actually my most anticipated game alongside Jurassic World Evolution, and already it promises to offer more than what Jurassic World Evolution vaguely promises to do. Not only does the game have a proper system where you can raise a dinosaur from hatchling to adult and see the transition happen before your eyes, but it also has pterosaurs, aquatic creatures, and prehistoric mammals to boot. So if you're disappointed that Frontier Developments probably won't make baby dinosaurs for its game, and if they fail to include pterosaurs and aquatics, then Prehistoric Kingdom will be the best place to go. So maybe give that game a once-over and perhaps support them in their endeavors. And finally, for the 20th most requested wish for Jurassic World Evolution, taking away about 2% of the vote, is the wish for more buildable areas on the islands. If I've heard correctly, this wish is in response to the news that we can't build everywhere on the islands of Jurassic World Evolution, particularly the areas connected to the beach. While I can understand if areas you can't build on simply mean sensibly inaccessible areas like mountains or deep ocean, I can't understand, particularly for the beach setting, how dinosaurs can't be prevented from going too far into the water. Certainly it's been done before through games like JPOG, where the shallow water could be drawn out to the edge of the map to look like a shelf of land that eventually went into inaccessible ocean, so that's a good point of reference. And there are probably lots of people that would also like to build literal beachfront properties there as well with certain buildings. It would make Jurassic World Evolution friendlier to any water-based TLC as well, with something like a Mosasaurus swimming in a bay, one of our parks, while being held back by an electric barrier. While I do believe we'll have enough buildable areas to build on without longingly looking elsewhere on the restricted parts of the islands, the developers should certainly make as much ground on the islands available as possible to build on, particularly beachfront areas. At last, we finally managed to get through the top 20 list of things most requested by the Jurassic World fanbase, but we're not done just yet. There were many miscellaneous, less mentioned, but no less important suggestions that I saw in the forums, and so now I choose to go to bat for them here. Indeed, this pie chart we've been looking at would have considerably tinier categories if we added all of the other unique requests that didn't get in the top 20. With this diagram, the miscellaneous category would take up about 27.4% of the whole pie chart if we had included it. For this section, I'll try to be quicker in terms of what suggestions I heard that I felt would be really cool additions, even if they weren't caught on by much of the fan base that I think are doable for the game and hold many benefits to the developers in terms of livening up their game. There are also some that are simply so novel that, while unlikely to be included, are still worth mentioning. So as quickly as I can, we start off with the wish for more ambient wildlife, particularly the likes of Compsognathus and perhaps more natural wildlife like butterflies and birds, and maybe even fish. I certainly can imagine the developers making mobile sprites that are not very interactable with the larger wildlife, and that will aimlessly roam the park before eventually disappearing. And perhaps they emerge only along the edges of forests too, or in the middle of large bodies of water, in the case of the fish. Better people dinosaur interactions. This was a really cool one because some responders wanted to see more animations where dinosaurs are actually fed by the guests, perhaps through a viewing gallery for the larger ones like sauropods, if not by the players themselves a la Zoo Tycoon 3. Others also wanted to have certain dinosaurs that, if they were set free from their cages, could peacefully intermingle with the people without hurting them. But I've heard that most of the dinosaurs in the game are capable of doing significant damage to people, so maybe that last one won't be as viable. But otherwise, letting guests feed your dinosaurs, if not yourself, would really make a unique, 
personal experience for players to do. An accurate and or feathered dinosaur DLC. This one received a fair number of responses, with most people usually wanting to give feathers to those dinosaurs that may reasonably have had them in real life, such as the raptors. Of course, there are plenty of other inaccurate issues with Jurassic Park's dinosaurs that others would like to see quote quote fixed as well, including the tail drooping stegosaurus, the bunny rabbit handed velociraptors, and the inaccurate Deinonychus that, in its most recent showing, remains inaccurate. I would absolutely love a DLC that would allow players to change their dinosaurs to reflect the paleontological record better. I mean, it's inexcusable that the developers don't know how to create accurate looking dinosaurs, what with many of the never before seen dinosaurs like Edmontosaurus, Nodosaurus, and Sintalsaurus looking stunningly accurate. I really think that adding an accuracy DLC would also be a good investment personally and financially for Frontier Developments because if they did add them, then not only would it be a gesture of goodwill to many dinosaur buffs in the fan base, but it would really draw those that are truly interested in actual paleontology to invest in the game and invest some of their money into it as well. So yes, I would like this inclusion for the game, especially if it means we can finally change that blasted Deinonychus and how it looks. At the very least, allow us to mod the thing so we can stuff that accuracy into it. Uh, is that a little too extreme? Uh. Moving on! There was the request for more feeding options. This is because some responders felt that goats and fresh meat were a little lacking in terms of what's available for the dinosaurs. Many people wanted to see cows like what we've seen in JPOG, and fish especially for Spinosaurus and, if they ever get added, pterosaurs and aquatics. And I don't think I saw any unique requests for the herbivores, so I suppose they're all right where they are, but yeah, more foodstuffs would be great. Cheats! JPOG offered a selection of cheats that one could unlock through certain motions of the arrow keys, including more money, automatic unlocks, and even an undead dinosaur cheat. While I'm not expecting that last one, I do believe we should have some cheats to work with and make our gaming lives funner and easier. Underground power lines. This was a great idea. I never realized how important this concept was until I read a handful of suggestions urging for this to be included. For Jurassic World Evolution, managing electricity, generators, and power lines will be a very crucial aspect of the game. For some of the responders, many were annoyed by how the power lines sometimes got in the way of the scenery in Jurassic World Evolution. Therefore, I think it would be really cool to allow an upgrade that permits power lines to go underground or in tunnels so that we don't have to clutter our skies with power lines. I think there was even a suggestion to allow underground power lines to experience flooding or something similar in order to cause blackouts. But, to keep things simple, a means of putting our power lines underground would be great. Multiplayer. This was one of the more common of the miscellaneous requests where responders wanted a means of seeing other people's islands, if not actually work together to build a park, as was present in Zoo Tycoon 3. Personally, I don't have a stake in whether multiplayer gets added or not, and I think that might be a lot of work for the developers to implement. But still. If it's possible, then I'd like to see it for those people or family that want to build their own Jurassic Park together, so hopefully we do see it in the future. More entry points. The only means of getting into the park that we've heard of is a monorail portal in a mountain that presumably goes to a hidden dock on the other side of the islands that we can't reach. With this glaring lack of diversity, requests want more visible entry points for guests, including a center that accepts helicopter landings, and a shipping port for ships. Ships in particular would probably be best included with an aquatic DLC, so yeah, I'd definitely like to see a cruise ship floating in with dozens of people on board to add to my park. Better Dinosaur AI Some people were particularly disgruntled by the breakout animations that dinosaurs do when barging through fences, but others wanted to see dinosaurs generally interact with more than just the fences, including actually clawing at the viewing galleries or even damaging buildings. I mean, I can certainly see the appeal of this if we finally remember what the Tyrannosaurus did to the bathroom stall and its unfortunate occupant in the first film. But admittedly, that sounds like a lot of extra animations to add, so maybe I'd be content with some better fence breakout animations or even a few special animations such as with the viewing gallery. Mission Variety JPOG had a really cool missions mode involving 10 missions where you either had to shoot down rampaging dinosaurs, shoot photos, or herd dinosaurs. Unfortunately, in Jurassic World Evolution, the bulk of our missions appear to be what we can accomplish through the three divisions that are security, entertainment, and science. 
It would be really cool to have some sort of missions mode available, but due to the lack of any mention of this, I proposed a compromise. Perhaps each of the islands should have their own unique missions that players need to accomplish through jeeps and helicopters. For example, Isla Sorna would have a handful of dinosaurs still roaming the island, and we would need to sedate them and place them in exhibits. Zoo Tycoon 3 also had a series of timed missions involving the zoo buggy, so perhaps we could do something similar with the jeep as well. Physical copies of the game. Many responders want this, and fortunately I believe this has been confirmed for a release date on July 3rd for PS4 and Xbox One, although no news for PC, so we'll see. A better penalization system for when visitor deaths occur in the park. Now, this one was interesting because the responses tended to be very detailed as to how this system should work. In JPOG, whenever people got killed, you were fined about $5,000, although there were workarounds in the coding that allowed you to lose just $0. Jurassic World Evolution could go cheap with this system, or, following the suggestions on the forum, they could go with a system that sees a reduction of tourist revenue, increased research, incubation, or repair times, particularly if employees get killed, and the completion of special contracts that require a certain number of security additions and upgrades. Just some little things. Doesn't need to be over the top. Dinosaurs eating from the environment. While I have seen plenty of dinosaurs appear to be nipping the grass and foliage around them, are they actually eating the plants and gaining sustenance, or are they merely doing an animation? That's what I would like to know, because I would indeed like to see dinosaurs eating from the environment, and a number of responders agreed. Some responders even mentioned this in the context of spinosaurs eating from the water, where spawn points for wild fish might exist for them to eat. Definitely some good possibilities, and one that adds to my desire that eating from the environment is absolutely something the dinosaurs of our park should be capable of doing if the developers haven't already done so. Pooping animations. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory there, although maybe a little too gruesome for what this game is going for. More unique weather and emergency events, because while dinosaur breakouts and tornadoes are one thing, some responders wanted some JPOG inspired events like heat waves that could kill people and dinosaurs through hyperthermia, rampaging dinosaurs where dinosaurs will rapidly attack anything they see, and, a unique request, power outages that just randomly occur without any influence from sabotages or weather whatsoever. A JPOG style weather forecast that allows us to see incoming weather events, such as tornadoes and whatnot would really give a peace of mind to players, especially me, because I hated seeing tornadoes in JPOG. Snap to grid building of paths and fences, which I believe means a grid system places down fences and buildings rather than just winging it and hoping it's straight. Simple suggestion, but hopefully we have some sort of system for it in place in the game at launch, if not thereafter. Different types of barriers to keep your dinosaurs contained. Containing dinosaurs behind electric fencing seems to be lacking diversity among these responders, and so what's desired is to have more ways of keeping dinosaurs in the places we choose. Some simply want more types of fencing, not just big structures of iron and cement, but of other material like typical farm fair wood fencing to keep smaller dinosaurs in, or even larger structures meant to keep elephants in. But then there were a few that mentioned barriers that were not made of fencing, but were eerily similar to the fair you could create in Zoo Tycoon 2 including moats, cliffs, and in one instance, the same system that was in place in Jurassic World in the film, where trackers within dinosaurs shocked them into staying within invisible boundaries. Although for an Indominus Rex, both in the film and potentially in the game, it would potentially find a way. I think this request would require a huge overhaul similar to the wishes in the top 20 list if this particular wish were to be completely implemented, particularly more terrain tools that would allow us to actually build impassable moats and cliffs, and more decorations that would add new types of fencing, including invisible ones, but whatever the case, I personally love the terraform barriers idea the most, since it was one of the big draws for me back when I bought Zoo Tycoon 2, so this is definitely an idea I think should be looked into in terms of implementing. Better genetic tinkering, which involved a number of suggestions like genes that might physically alter dinosaurs, such as a gigantism gene, a dwarfism gene, and more skin patterns for the same cosmetic genes, sort of like how no two zebras are alike despite being, well, alike. Playing as the dinosaur, which was among the more highly requested wishes that I saw within the miscellaneous group. And it's certainly a cool idea that would create a lot of unique scenarios for content creators and players alike. But since this is more a management game rather than a dinosaur simulator game, I really doubt that we'll see this. 
I suppose that means I'm left with promoting another indie game called Saurian, a game set in the Hell Creek Formation of Montana where you will eventually play as Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, Pachycephalosaurus, and Dakota Raptor, that last one already being available for those that buy the game, to live out their life cycles in the Hell Creek Formation as it really was. You'll find a link to their blog and Steam page in the description. More park options that allow you to control the flow of guests into the park, particularly two systems that were found in JPOG, an emergency mode and the ability to open or close the park. Emergency mode in JPOG sounded an alarm that caused guests to flee to the nearest visitor center or security bunker, and so this system would certainly come in handy when a sudden storm or dinosaur unleashed itself upon the park. Opening and closing the park is just what it is, and this would probably come in handy for those playing on sandbox mode that don't want to deal with guests, but just want to play with dinosaurs instead. These options seem almost matter-of-fact in their inclusion into the game, but again, I don't recall seeing them in the previews, so if they're not there, I agree that they should be implemented. More customization of buildings. Somewhat similar to wish number three for more decorations, this wish desires for buildings to be able to be physically altered and have different themes. While I think modding capabilities would work wonders with this idea, such as creating the dilapidated version of the visitor center that we saw in the Jurassic World film, it would also be nice to see the appearances of some of these buildings and make them themed like the theme building scene in Zoo Tycoon 2. So, hypothetically, there would be a tab that would allow us to select a theme, and then automatically it would translate across the building and have, say, vines cover it for a jungle theme, or straw and bamboo for a safari theme, or whatever. Dinosaur body scars from aging or actual battles against other dinosaurs. The picture you see here caused a flurry of activity among the fan base because many thought that it was evidence that dinosaurs could visibly age. Unfortunately, it was confirmed by the developers to merely be the side effect of sickness, and so that Tyrannosaurus was reflecting a gaunt, sickly individual instead. But since this is in the game already, why couldn't this be applied to aging? For example, when a dinosaur reached the end of its lifespan, then it would experience a degree of gauntness and droopiness about its body, and finally it would collapse and die. Meanwhile, for battle scars, I think that could be based off the number of times a given dinosaur goes head to head with another dinosaur. Such as, after X number of battles with a Spinosaurus, a Tyrannosaurus would have two or three large, healed scars across its body. There would be a really cool system that might allow us to recreate our iconic film anti-hero, who goes by Rexy or Roberta, depending upon who you are. More choices in terms of what we do with islands that we've already completed. While I have heard that multiple saves is possible, I haven't heard about whether it's possible to restart previous islands on the same save. I might also fit in here that there were even a couple of requests that wanted more off-island options, perhaps a situation like the San Diego Jurassic Park that had once been planned in Jurassic World The Lost World, but this seems unlikely so I won't push that one too much. Basically, we need restartable islands. The ability to construct fences through the water, which I imagine is something we'll be able to do with shallow water, but if we can't do it through deep water, then it would be nice to have in order to prepare for any future DLC involving aquatics like the Mosasaurus. Displaying dead dinosaurs. I believe only one person suggested this, but I thought about it and thought it was a really cool idea. I imagine the responder thought of dead dinosaurs in the context of a skeleton you could put up as decoration, perhaps something similar to the infamous Tyrannosaurus skeleton we saw in the first Jurassic Park film, or the Spinosaurus skeleton in Jurassic World. However, to make the job of the developers simple, I propose that when a dinosaur ragdolls and dies relatively recently, it can be hooked up by a transport helicopter, transported to a decoration stand that would be specifically designed for dinosaurs, and then the dinosaur model would stand rigid in place to represent a stuffed statue of the animal. I think that would be a really cool addition, especially if Jurassic World Evolution's developers make a serious effort to add more decorations, as well as allow us to iconicize our most beloved dinosaurs. An automatic hatchery system that could automatically pump out dinosaurs based on a counter or something similar, that always restocked exhibits if a certain quota dropped because, say, the dinosaurs were eaten or died somehow. I imagine this request was in response to the fact that in JPOG, when dinosaurs died, we had to manually restock their cages. And so I agree that a system that could be aware of dinosaur populations and if they're below a certain quota would be a welcome addition, especially if we're feeding our carnivores more natural dinosaurian prey. A more complex financial system. 
While it was recently confirmed that we could sell dinosaurs, particularly through missions such as through the security division, some people wanted certain details like prestige-based financial bonuses through the presence of famous dinosaurs, as well as a means of advertising our parks and acquiring sponsors to sponsor us with money. A better overmap UI. While it's true that all we've seen are the early development builds, I'm surprised that the UI system we've seen has the tabs to build stuff with and the level of your divisions at the bottom, but that's pretty much it. I and a handful of form responders would like to see dinosaur counters, visitor counters, and the date and time when the game takes place, so seeing that added should hopefully be forthcoming if it's not going to be there already. No microtransactions. A fair enough request in my opinion, although I won't mind if Frontier Development does it in proportionate amounts, such as what they've done with the pre-order edition, since that means more financial resources to add more wishes into the game. But developers, please do make sure that those pre-order dinosaurs are available at some point in the future. For those that didn't get the pre-order edition, pretty please. Dinosaurs as security. Certainly one of the cooler but least likely additions to Jurassic World Evolution, where we could use velociraptors to contain large dinosaurs and perhaps level them up to make them more obedient. But again, an unlikely addition. Psh, please add them. VIP guests, where certain people can come into the park through contracts among the divisions, and they would look visibly distinct while acting as an important impetus to influence your park's design. A better photo mode, or proper recording mode that caters to the more photographic players of the fanbase, who can adjust brightness, blur, etc. to make for better photographs or video, which I imagine would be especially handy for content creators like YouTubers. Splash animations while the dinosaur walks through the water, just like JPOG had. More path options, particularly elevated paths and bridges like what we've seen in Zoo Tycoon 2. More language options that are not just in English, since I saw a lot of people like Italians wanting the game in their own language. A black market fossil trade system, which would allow us to readily access fossils without going through dig teams as we've seen in JPOG, but which would be a high risk, high reward deal that may just as likely hit the jackpot in desired dinosaur DNA as it would to spit out the wrong DNA. More stuff to do with the helicopters, perhaps like rescuing guests or using beacons or lures to influence where dinosaurs went, just like we had access to in JPOG. Planet Coaster Assets. Hey, it's a game by Frontier Developments, so why couldn't they do something like that, especially if they wanted to fulfill the fanbase's desire for more attractions like roller coasters and whatnot. Pausing the game, which sounds like a welcome addition when things hit the fan and we need a moment to think to ourselves, although if there is a difficulty mode, Perhaps you wouldn't be able to use this option. And finally, the ability to view through the viewing gallery or other viewing points, something that we had the ability to do in JPUG. And so, those are some of the main miscellaneous wishes that didn't get a lot of votes, but I certainly like them. Definitely a great, varied selection, and I hope at least a handful will see the light of day in a future DLC. We have now completed our discussion on the major wishes that the very fanbase of Jurassic World Evolution desires as we move forward with the game. I really do hope that wishes like pterosaurs and aquatics, better attack animations, modding, and many more get added to the game eventually. There is nothing left for me to say other than a request for my viewers that, rather than become my subscribers or give likes, perhaps you could take the time to share this video, particularly with the developers of Jurassic World Evolution, or even make an account in the forum to give your own requests for content to the developers. I have no doubt that there are certain things that maybe I missed and that the responders in the forum failed to cover, so maybe you have something good to contribute that I didn't discuss. And of course, general support for requests that were covered in this video would also be helpful as well. And so, for those of you that were just here for the wish list, well, like I said, there's nothing left for me to say, so you're free to go now. Oh, you're still here? Well then, I suppose there are a few parting words that I have left for anyone that cares to listen, so... Thank you for taking one last moment to watch the end of this video. I suppose some people might be surprised as to why I'm calling it quits on YouTube when I only just started in 2018. We're not even halfway through the year yet, and Jurassic World Evolution hasn't even dropped. Wasn't I going to bill myself as a Jurassic World Evolution channel who would post news and content about the game when it comes out? Indeed, that was the original plan, but I think it's only fair to explain why it is that I'm leaving so soon. To summarize why I decided to leave my channel, I think we first need to discuss why I made this channel to begin with. Without going into too much detail, the most important reason was because I wanted to keep my eggs out of one basket. Or in other words, I wanted to give my life multiple options in the event that my primary plans fell through. 
Over the last few years, I've been focused on getting a higher education, and I've been patiently waiting to see if those plans worked out. At the time I made my channel, my prospects were grim, and so I thought to myself that making a YouTube channel might be a good option that I could pursue if my primary goals did not work out. However, it seems as if I've been blessed, and so my primary plans are back in action, which makes YouTube of secondary concern as to how I wish to plan my life, and I want to make sure my new plans succeed. There is also another reason why I made my channel, and you might be able to guess it based on content alone. It's because I wanted to join the discussion on Jurassic World Evolution while it was still in development so that I could perhaps contribute a small part in terms of influencing the game and its fan base, so that it succeeds in the biggest way possible. I still hope that even after this video has long been posted, I'll still be able to join myself with the chorus of the fanbase regarding what we still want for the game while the game is still fresh for Frontier Developments and Universal. I still believe there's much left to do, and if Frontier Developments does manage to implement the things I mentioned in this video, then despite the measly amount of content I've posted on this channel, I will be happy with the work that I've done. Admittedly, it's a bit of a shame that I've billed myself as a channel that's going to discuss Jurassic World Evolution, and perhaps show relevant content about it too, since it's coming out very soon. That was the original plan. I was even planning out the next video discussing my thoughts on what my opinions were about the early access video content we've seen throughout YouTube. But I got behind on the news, and I also realized that there would be very little that I could actually contribute to the discussion that others were not already discussing. For example, my discussion on Jurassic World Evolution's initial dig site system occurred when we had very little to go on in terms of what creatures would be in the game. But now, thanks to people like Reddit user Hiplobanaxa, not sure if I said that name correctly so I apologize, and whose link you will find in the description, we now know all the formations that will be in the game at launch, and we can already predict what dinosaurs will be part of them as well, such as Mudaburosaurus for the Macunda Formation in Australia, since it's the only notable dinosaur that's been found there. The only conceivable things I could discuss are 1. How my original predictions fared, and 2. The hope that the announcement we received of free dinosaur DLC means that we'll see more additions to the map, such as the La Colonia formation in Argentina for Carnotaurus. And of course, there's the changes that have happened in my life, so that must take priority. I will miss the prospect of making videos that incorporate a little bit of science in them, or allow me to engage my audience like my recorrection series was going to do but those need to be put on hold for now. But YouTube has certainly been a most enlightening experience for me. Getting to talk with you guys has been quite interesting in terms of learning new information and bouncing ideas off from you. Making video content has also proven to be great in terms of allowing me to experience the amount of time, preparation, and hard work that is required to make such videos, but I'm glad to have given a shot at it. I definitely thank those that watch any of the content of my channel, and I really do hope that maybe I could be a positive influence on the Jurassic World Evolution community so that we have an amazing game for us to play and for others to play long into the future, perhaps for the next few decades here on out until the next great dinosaur park simulator comes along. And so, I give my best regards to those that watched my video, and despite my criticisms and nagging against the developers of this game, I really do hope they succeed in making this game great and adding fan-based desires like what we've discussed in this video. I hope everyone that has watched also has a great time playing Jurassic World Evolution and a great time watching Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom when it comes out. So, for the last time, I say, Leo Venator signing out, and I wish you all well.